as the Lord Herald of wearing weapons on your back, there is one item that more iconically goes on your back more than anything else that I haven't actually covered yet. And that is the backpack, which makes sense that it goes on the back because it's a back pack. And one of the things that people have raised when I was showing, because I've worn lots of things on my back, spears, bows, swords, and people have said, well, Shad, when you actually wear a backpack, you're not going to be able to wear the swords and all these other things on your back. Really? I beg to differ. Shadowverse. Greetings, I'm Shad. And as the cold open to this video kind of mentioned, there's one item I haven't really analyzed yet in regards to a practical and realistic loadout for an adventurer that really deserves to be covered and that it is the humble backpack. Now the first thing that kind of should be addressed is should an adventurer actually wear a backpack? Yes and no. There's actually a bit more to it than you might think which is why I want to discuss it with you while I'm making this video because one of the first things I'm already noticing is uh, the backpack, when it's actually weighed down and you know, packs tight and everything, is decently encumbering. And I'm not wearing a big one. This is actually a more modest sized backpack. And does it reflect what the medieval, you know, look should be? Where we're talking about fantasy adventuring. And so there can be a little bit of, you know, skewing in design. First of, first of all, backpacks absolutely did exist in the medieval period. But this is what they look like. They more look like rug sacks on a wooden frame oftentimes. A lot of times they're actually kind of wicker baskets that they just wove straps through and put them over their shoulders. And so yes, backpacks did exist in the medieval period, but they weren't exactly what, uh, you know, more modern backpacks kind of look like. So it depends on what level of authenticity you're wanting to reflect in your fantasy setting. So if you're wanting to go full medieval, this is kind of what they would look like. These are direct references from the medieval period. But if you're in a fantasy setting, you can kind of just say, well, you know, if uh, the demand of, you know, backpacks are a bit higher, you you could see that some people were would probably go out of their way to make them a bit more useful. Extra pouches, they need to hang on the back, and they could start to reflect somewhat what more modern-ish kind of backpacks would kind of look like. And so that's where this one, you know, it works. It works for what we're trying to show here for an adventuring setting. I'm not saying this is exactly medieval. Yet having said that, just wearing this backpack, what I'm wearing right now, and this isn't like a full on large, you know, one, as large as what we see in the medieval period with those, you know, wooden frames, or even as large as certain hiking modern backpacks look like, even this more modest one is surprisingly cumbersome. Now I can still walk, move and everything. And we're gonna be doing some examples and some brief kind of tests to see exactly how encompassing a backpack would be. But I wanna go back to that question I was starting out with. Do you, would you really want one? Would, would this be your, your first option? And it would depend on the resources you have available and the length of trip that you're going on. If you are traveling between villages and settlements where you can find food and shelter, within a day's, you know, daylight day, so we're not full 24 hours, but like in the, in the length of time that you have down, you can actually walk around at these. Uh, if you can walk between those, you actually don't really need to carry too many rations if you can get food where you're going and shelter. You need to start to pack items of food when you're traveling into the wilderness where you don't have food and shelter. That's when it really starts. You have to carry items that are more useful for just surviving. And then it depends on how long because you could actually carry, you know, a day's, and we're, look, we're looking at hardy rations, a day's hardy rations in, say, belt pouches right here, okay? Um, lunch, dinner, breakfast, and if you get food items that are small but dense in nutrition stuff, well, you'd be looking at jerky, maybe certain types of dense cheeses and things like that, uh, dried fruits, you can actually fit a decent amount in just pouches. And yes, medieval people had pouches quite often, Sometimes, not necessarily always look like it. Oftentimes they're actually on a bandit. Actually, we've got a good example. Oz, Sir Meme Lord, come here. This is Oz, the Meme Lord. Also, also fantasy uh, wizard, sorcerer, I forget. You always change. Pronoun doesn't matter to me. Okay. But you're wearing a pouch, sir. I am. This pouch is actually quite reflective of what a lot of ones looked like in the medieval period. Look how stylish it is. Model, show it off there. 
look at look, look at how stylish that couch is. There you go. You see. So that often what they look like, and sometimes over a belt, over the shoulder kind of strap. Thank you. You can go now. So awesome. Don't worry. I'll, I'm gonna need my knights with me a bit later on in the video. So if you could fit what you need in pouches, well, you don't need to be over encumbered with a backpack. The next thing, if you actually are starting to get the point where you need one of the, one of the more important items will be a blanket and a thick woolen one can actually uh, keep the water off it. And if it, depending if it's waxed or not, it depends what you want with the blanket, but wool can actually cause water to bead off of it and can be sort of like waterproof to a certain extent. And so, it would be good for shelter, but also warmth and other things like that. So like a good blanket is gonna be high on the list. And then food supplies. Now you could go into more extravagant kind of uh, items and stuff. Like, do you need a lantern? Do you need rope? Do you need grappling hooks? Yeah, I got the adventuring gear can get rather extensive. I'd actually suggest this excellent video done by a friend of mine, Dylan, from Duradia Productions. He's made a whole video kind of exploring what an adventurer would carry. So that's worth taking a look. But right now we're, we're going to be focusing on backpacks. And so if you're getting to the point where you're, you're needing enough supplies to warrant actually wearing a backpack, the question is, would you actually want to carry one? Because if it's on your back, there are some issues that are going to arise. And you could avoid all those issues if you just get a pack horse or a mule. Okay, uh, you can carry a lot more on them. It doesn't encumber yourself. You can just focus on the weapons, the items that you're going to need for potential whatever. And then you could carry just a day's worth of rations or maybe even two in some belt pouches and you might be much better off. But you might not have enough money. And so when you don't have enough money for like a pack mule or horse, but could you hire one? You know, there's an option. Uh, then you might, especially if you're on your own and you don't have those things, then we come into the classic backpack. And so now I want to experiment a bit. I want to walk around with this backpack, with my weapon loadout, to see how encumbering, encompassing it is. Uh, pull out a weapon, see to what level of uh, combative compatibility I, I retain with all these loadouts. So to do that, I need to venture forth into uh, a fantasy world where I might see some monsters. And uh, this is a bit of a secret. I haven't revealed on Shadowversity, but some of my knights have already started to find out that uh, my castle, specifically the door, is actually a portal into some fantasy worlds. And so we're going to be going through that door uh, into, uh, maybe not, I go to the Shadlands a lot, but this time we might go into the realm. And to do that, we need a classic adventuring party. Knights, come and join me. We have Oz, he's our, he's our magic user. Okay, okay. We've got our tank, Sir Ben, all right, and then we have our priest cleric, Sir Nathan, and I'm I am the, the ranger slash leader, leader of the group. So I assume we're going to the Shadowlands then? Not this time. We're going to something some place special. Now I know you haven't seen this before, but um because yeah, I'll I'll let you guys in on the secret, so just a minute. It's set to go to hell. Have you guys been going in here? That was me. Hang on, hang on. Ah, ah, good. We're going to go to the realm? Wait, so wait, wait, wait. We're going through that? Yeah, we're going through this. This is actually a portal to different realms. Shut I can't go through there. Don't let them take me through there, guys. Come on, come on. We can't go no, through there. Go, There's go. danger. No, 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 no. Alright, what's the hold up? You see monsters? Chad, where are we? Hang on. Alright, where are they? No, where, where are we? Oh, oh, where are we? Can't remember. This is your world. Yeah, it's, it's hard to remember everything you put into a world. You... It's very detailed stuff. Huh. Um, I've stepped in crap. Oh crap. <laughs> Hang on, so it is. I can look it up. What type of crap is this, Shad? I can look that up too. How can you do that? Campfire Blaze. Yeah, um, when you world build and ma make a thing, you get Campfire Blaze helps you keep track of all the details, all the backstory, interactive maps. So now I can look up where we are. There. Surely you can't do all the Hey! Wait, near Silverthorn. I heard that. I actually heard that the castle, Silverstone, has gone missing recently. Oh, they must be using a virtual private castle. Those are really good. I've heard about them. Um, 
Okay, so the poo, so what? Ah, campfire blaze, it also lets you look up um, any world building. So, carry up oh, creatures, creature backstories. Hey, enchanted items, you might be able to find a shared oh. Enchanted poo? Yeah, maybe enchanted poo. Important characters. Uh, Lord Sarek Crow is the Lord of Silverform. Um, it's got, it's got the whole history there. I stepped in Lord Sarek's poo. Did you see? It's so easy to look things up. Really? Was it Lord? No, not Lord Sarek's poo. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll, we'll find out what poo that is. I just need to keep looking. But what's really useful, I can look up things so quickly. Like, look, Lord Sarek Crow, his backstory. Oh, hey, that's interesting. Uh, all right, so creatures. We want creatures, don't we? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, that's the timeline feature. Sorry, sorry. Oh. You mind? I, I just need to quickly. I need to pay for the monthly. Well, you don't have to do monthly subscription, but if you want, you can do monthly subscription and only pay for what you use. It's actually really Only nice. pay for what you use? Only pay for what you use. Wow. That was so convincing, you guys. <laughs> I hope so. Campfire Blaze, I use it for everything. But seriously, Campfire Blaze is actually really good. Uh, you can pay for what you want, or, and it can be a one off purchase or a monthly subscription, so it can be as little as $1. Um, all right, all right. What's the You point? have stepped in. Is that sulfur or. Oh, no, that, that one was me. Oh, sorry, guys. Better out than in, I always say. Oh, oh, it's dwarf poo. Oh. Dwarf poo is explosive, um, particularly because of the alcohol they drink. Oh, so I should uh, tread lightly? Don't, don't step too hard, otherwise. So if I step really, really hard right now, we'll explode. Basically, or you will. I yes. think we'll be safe. Well, literally. Well, I'm going to hop everywhere I go then. Hang on. What's that noise? It's an airplane. Oh, there's that too. <laughs> Bloody airplane going! That's actually not an airplane, that is a dragon letting wind while flying over. <laughs> He's crop dusting. Oh. Now that the fluctuating dragon is passing ahead, we can. Let's see I, I heard something before. Ah, yes. You hear it? Giggling. What makes giggling sense? I can't remember. Oh, I, I can look at my notes and campfire blaze. This is a useful program, guys. It's like, it, actually, it is. All right. Oh crap! Run! Run! I never run. I have slayed demons and goblins and beasts that it's are fairies. Oh crap! Fairies, I bet they're pretty cute. <laughs> no, they're not cute, they'll eat your flesh! Well, I hope so. <laughs> because you understand that they'll drink your blood. I've had worse. Dude, they'll grind your bones. Hey. Did I mention Campfire Blaze has its own word processor? I do honestly recommend it. Uh, thank you for Campfire Blaze for promising this video. There's a link in the description below if you're interested. Uh, uh. Close the door, but we, we did not let the fear down. Anyway, thank you, thank you, fellow knights, the game knights. In fact, if you want to see more of the game knights, you can check them out on game nights. Uh, link in the description. It's my new YouTube channel. It's got great content already. Hey, anyway, thanks, fellas. I'll see you on the next adventure. Shut the door. Shut. Shut. Shut it. So, what I've been finding in regards to wearing weapons with a backpack is that. It works surprisingly well. Like, um, you see that these are pretty secure. A uh, couple of things, of course, is that I'm kind of using a, a special loadout. One of the things I do need to mention to be able to make this work, to wear a backpack and, you know, all these weapons, uh, you do need some, well, not all, all special things. Anyone can make a, uh, a uh, <laughs> nail catch. And I, literally, I'm just using the same nail catch, and this time I'm hooking it on the backpack itself to hang there. Works, works, works pretty good. So, bow there, and uh, I can just feel where it is and grab it when I need it. So the nail catch, which I got here, uh, video there, works really, really well. Now, I haven't made an actual proper attachment. I've just been hooking it on the uh, backpack. And so, I've uh, just been throwing it together quickly. Now, 
actually usually need help to hook it on to the correct part. But if I just loop it down like that, that actually holds it pretty good. And that's the nail catch that you're just catching on the backpack. Actually, where is it attached to it? Oh, it's through the loop. It's through the loop? It's through the loop. Aye! Practice makes perfect people. You just need practice, okay? Um, I'm not sure I'll be able to get it every time, but uh, there's a loop there that the nail catch catches onto and it hangs really, really decently. So you can do it with the nail catch and that means you could do it with the spear. You could just hook the spear onto your backpack. What you also have noticed though, is that my back scabbard, the shabbard, the upgraded one, I'm able to do this because it's so modular. So credit to Blades and Blazers. We can adjust the distance where it's hanging. Um, and so we can push it further back to the side, make the bottom strap underneath, pull it towards the actual uh, backpack. And then with the sword hanging on the side, it can be a simple matter of uh, pulling it out just like that and you're good to go. So you can wear like uh, weapons with a backpack as to how many. So this is, I'm going with a minimal adventuring loadout here, which is primary weapon. And for me, my secondary weapon or sometimes primary is my longbow, okay? But that means I could have a spear here. Maybe I could hang, also hang a shield. I still have room on this side. I could actually have an additional weapon if I wanted. I already got the dagger right there. And then I got a, this could be mace, axe, longsword, and I still wouldn't be overly encumbered. Now, as to being able to fight, well, I already kind of did some experiments with, with the weapons you can carry, but I'm just gonna quickly just go through some motions here. Now, I'm not gonna be able to do some high spin things because I'll hit my, sword, my bow, but in terms of I was fighting, you know, do a still block, still fight, still cut. So, you know, I still have a decent amount of versatility. So the question is of if you can fight with a backpack on and weapons, yes. And this isn't too bad because everything is secured pretty well. And look, I'm moving around and stuff. I can still fight, I can still do big cuts. It's, so this actually works decently well with a backpack on still. There's another important thing that we need to consider about backpacks in the lens of adventuring because in the discussion so far, we've been really thinking about the stuff that you take with you. But what about the stuff that you find and take away from your adventure. In actual fact, in a lot of my adventures, apart from like rations, I'm usually leaving an adventurer with more gear and loot, hopefully, than what I arrived with. And so a backpack, especially, and like, by the way, a pack horse would be a, a mule or whatever, would be really useful in this situation is to carry loot away. And if you don't have a horse or a, pack, a mule or something like that, this is where a backpack would be really beneficial. And so you actually might bring an empty backpack that has nothing in it, and you just have enough supplies, maybe if it's a day's journey or whatever, in uh, you know your, your pouches or whatever, and the backpack is there to fill it up with loot. Now, gold, my goodness. Like, this is one of the issues about adventuring that we don't really consider, because in video games, you can just load up your inventory to whatever, and yeah, there's like weight encumbrance things, but you can sometimes move in encumbrance, and they're very generous as well, and other things. Or in reality, if you found a chest of gold, that would be so insanely heavy. Like, you're not carrying that, I'm sorry. You were like, you could fit a couple of pouches in the backpack, granted, but a chest, you need a mule or a horse to carry that, okay? And if not, like, uh, you know, you, you know, Dungeon Master, whatever adventure, if you're role playing, it might just be, yeah, uh, good luck carrying it. Like you'd have to, imagine carry even between two people, like a full chest of gold. It'd be so heavy. But you're like, you might actually have to just so hand wave, we put the gold in a safe spot, bury it maybe, <laughs> go back to the village, get horses, and then pick it up later on after the fact, because sometimes the loot you can find, whew, but okay, if it's just low level loot, what if it's an enchanted dagger, maybe new sword, or weapons, or stuff like that, all those things actually would work really well with a backpack, and again, you don't need to do a more modernish one like me, you could have the medieval kind of ones with uh, the wicker baskets or the rug sacks on a metal frame or something like that. Um, and so you could actually have like a disassemble frame that you can just tie stuff to, put it on, and then trudge back out with all the loot you find. Because loot's important. There really is a conditioning part to backpacks because I don't wear them often. And I have to tell you, like the weight on the shoulders is a, oh, they're getting sore. <laughs> like, ugh. But I know, like, obviously people get used to it. Military, hiking and things, but 
First, it's a good point to consider, like with your adventures. Is, uh, is there a bookish kind of wizard in your party who does not wear and carry things very often? Okay, he'll be lagging behind a bit there, I'd say. I should say there are situations in which you could take off your backpack quicker, okay? And there are ones made that are more, I guess, easily detachable than others. This one actually has kind of very small, you know, shoulder straps. And so getting on, there's a bit of stretching and stuff. And then because I've actually connected to the Baldrick a bit, um, especially with the side scabbard, that means that it takes a little bit of fiddling to get on and off. And I, this setup doesn't have a quick release. And so my only option would be to fight with it on. But there are other backpacks that are very much similar where it takes too long to get in and off and in a pinch. And if you're waylaid by monsters and stuff, you're just gonna have to fight with it on. But then there are other ones which you can get off easier. And uh, depending on if your weapons are connected to the backpack or not, that's gonna actually honestly make it uh, either easier or usually harder, especially if the weapons are attached, to take the, the, the backpack off ready for the fight. So I do wanna emphasize just how secure this all is, okay? Like, I can actually, you know, jump up and down and stuff, run, um, but I can run with it pretty darn easy. Uh, everything is remarkably secure, and even like the bow, okay? The bow has the, been the, the funny one, but taking it off so quickly and shooting, and look how quick I can do it in this other video here. So the bow has always been the interesting kind of, can you actually, you know, wear a bow, but solve that one too with a, the nail catch. See my new pretty nail catch, isn't it nice? So I have to admit, I am gaining a little bit of satisfaction out of showing that you can have a basic adventuring loadout, certain number of weapons, like I've got a full quiver of arrows right here, with a backpack, all being secure, tight, and you can do the adventuring stuff. My hands are free. I can climb and everything with this, okay? And running with the sword on the back, I, I've always found more secure than sword on the hip, by the way. Um, it was actually surprisingly secure. Maybe it's the weight that's making this less flapping around because it's so full. One thing that we should experiment in, can I shoot a bow with this, you know? Fully stretched back and everything. So it's only one way to find out. Oh, well, look, I don't need to shoot, honestly. All I need to do is test drawing. If I can get full draw on it with the backpack on and everything, I'm not putting it on the string. The arrow is actually off the string here, okay? And uh, I'm not wearing gloves, so it'll hurt my fingers a bit more. But uh, let's have a go. Yeah, that's not bad. Honestly, I didn't get it for as far back as I can because this arm is pretty sore and tired. The weight on the shoulders is affecting my arm strength and pulling <laughs> the sword in and out um, has done it. But uh, I reckon I can still get it back further. Ah, if I get down into a proper stance. Oh, that's better. Yes, you can definitely shoot. Uh, this is a hundred pound longbow, so a warbow level category thing. Definitely shoot a longbow with a backpack and other weapons on your person at the same time. There is an important thing that would impact an adventurer far more so that should be taken into consideration. And oftentimes it's just overlooked in fantasy when we actually role playing or in video games. And there are other things that fall into the same category where we just happily ignore it. I mean, one, which isn't the thing I'm gonna mention, but you'll be able to get an idea what it is, uh, ammunition, okay? We just kind of take for granted that we're always gonna have enough arrows, you know, on them. And there are a couple of games that actually have ammunition limits and you always have to replenish them, but it becomes a bit of a drag. It's annoying and there's a reason why in games they just ignore it now. And usually when you pick up a bow, you have unlimited ammunition, but of course, that's not how the real world works. You would have like limited ammunition. So what am I talking about? It's weight and fatigue. Of course, people can uh, condition themselves to be able to carry heavy weights on their backs. We see it in the military, we see it in hiking and other things. And so you could just say adventurers, they have that. They just are conditioned to be able to do it. But over how long, what weights, and when you actually get into combat. This is actually a more lightweight setup, yet it still is quite fatiguing and cumbersome, okay? I can fight with it, but could I fight for long? Could I try, like, especially after say, I've traveled a full day with this thing on your back. If you've ever done hiking, well, isn't it glorious when you just take off that weight and you're like, ah. So imagine after all that hiking and you're waylaid by monsters and you need a fight, okay? My preference would be if I could ever get away with not wearing a backpack, honestly, I would choose that. I would always happily carry my weapons, because at the moment I'm carrying my weapons and additional weight on the back. Obviously, 
the, the weapons still add a weight, but they're far more manageable than something on top in addition to it. And so I really think that the primary thing, if an adventurer always had the option, it would be a pack animal, okay? like a mule or something where you can tie things to. There's a couple of other interesting things because uh, what about when you're adventuring? Say you have a backpack, okay? Your other option is you've been tra traveling heaps and everything, and you're going to explore some ruins. There's a dungeon. I have, I have uh, conflicting feelings about dungeons. There's a video. I, oh, they can work, but generally I don't like them. Anyway, so there are obviously things can substitute for dungeons, like catacombs and stuff. They're fine. So if you're going to a place where you know you're going to be doing an adventuring type thing, okay, obviously when you're waylaid by monsters suddenly, you would probably don't have time to take off the backpack and everything. It, but if you do have time, I think you would always take off your backpack, okay? Put it in a safe spot and then take only what you need. This is interesting because the adventuring gear, sometimes people just load up with all these crazy things and then they would need a backpack with them, of course. But if you could just get away with pouches, rope, you know, grappling hook, some odds and ends are just useful things and put down the backpack, absolutely. If you had a mule, you would do the same with them. You wouldn't you wouldn't really take a mule into a dungeon. I mean, look at Lord of the Rings when Aragorn and the, the Fellowship reach Moria. It's like, the mines aren't a place for a pony. Even one as brave as Isabel. I can't remember the pony's name. Even one as brave as, I forget his name. So, biologically, <laughs> it makes sense. Especially steep stairs and the, like, you can't really take a pack horse with you. So it also depends, depending on the terrain that you need to go through, if you can take the horse or pack animals with you. Interestingly enough, this very thing did come up in the recent role-playing campaign that I've been doing with some of the other creators in the community of the sword. This is Scholar Gladiatoria, Lindy Bage, Modern History TV, Metatron. It's over on Game Nights. And uh, a situation where they come to steep stairs and one of the characters, Matt's character of Scholar Gladiatoria, had a pack animal with all these supplies and couldn't really take him with it. <laughs> Things happen. And also that, it was in Silverthorn, and so the reference is it, 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 it. I like crossover stuff. So, all important things to consider. And I really would think, by the level of, the, I guess, restriction and weight I carry, I would not choose to take a large backpack like this into a dungeon. Uh, or if I'm, uh, it's very much case by case, because if you're in a dungeon, you don't really need shelter, so do you need a blanket? You'd need food supplies, you can put them in pouches. Um, it depends on how much you're carrying. But if you're going in to uh, a dungeon that could potentially take weeks, uh, if it's a long tunnel like Mines of Moria or something like that, well then you probably would need a backpack. Oddly enough, Aragorn doesn't really wear a backpack. He's got a rugsack, doesn't he? But it's just a sword. So it's funny, I always look to Lord of the Rings. But backpacks are an interesting topic. And so the, the main takeaway that I'm finding with my own experimentation it is very case dependent. The preference would be not to wear it, in my opinion, if you could get away with it and other small supplies. But you can, you absolutely can wear it with all the weapons and everything you can. You can fight to a level of effect. I think a, uh, some type of negative for encumbrance would make sense. Just even with, because even with one small, like I said, it's, it's actually being a bit restrictive, but it works, it does work. And, and again, from the first thing, you can definitely wear weapons on the back on the side you can actually wear a decent loadout with a backpack as well what are your thoughts is there anything i missed or any considerations you might want to uh, talk about in, regard, in regards to adventuring backpacks and whatnot uh, i'd love to hear them in the comment section below and i also look forward to seeing you in the next video here on shadowversity so until that time hey, well.